Hey everyone, welcome back to part three. This one's gonna be pretty action-packed. We're gonna be making some projectiles, some weapons. We're gonna use the strategy programming pattern to have different kinds of weapons. As you can see here, we got some single shot different types and we're gonna make some other kinds that are a little bit slightly more complicated like this triple shot here and these crazy rockets that follow the player around. There's links to the source code in the description as well as any of the assets used. So without further ado, Hit that like button and let's get started with the project. I'm going to start by bringing in all the assets that I want. These rockets, missiles and bombs and some other VFX uh, from my asset library. I'm going to resize a lot of them too because they're just too big for the project. So I'll set most of these down to a 0.2 or even smaller for some of the models. And then I'm also going to change the rotation of some of the models because this game plays up, not forward. So I need to rotate a few of them. Your mileage may vary depending on what you're using, but uh, I just wanted to put this in here in case anybody wanted to pause and see what any of the settings were that I'm using. I want to point out something on these VFX that I'm using too, which is they have a setting to use soft particles. Soft particles try to blend the particles with the background in a perspective camera, but we're using an orthographic camera, so it may or may not show up for you. And so for me, I'm just going to turn the setting off. You may see this on other shaders too. Uh, so whenever you're trying to blend 3D stuff with a 2D game, just be aware that could be a problem why your VFX aren't showing up. What I want to do next here is a little bit of cleanup. So we're going to be making some more extension methods later in the video and some attributes as well. So let's move our existing extension methods into a new folder. Let's make another folder. We'll call it attributes. And inside of there, let's make another folder for editor scripts. And let's make a new script. We're going to define an attribute that will let us choose a layer in the inspector instead of just putting a number in. So we'll call it layer attribute. Layer attribute is actually going to be very bare bones because we don't actually need to specify any data on it. We just needed to use it basically as a decorator in the inspector. So let's put it in the utilities namespace. It needs to inherit from property attribute, but it doesn't need any contents. Let's just make it as simple as possible. What it does need is a property drawer. So let's make a new class that will inherit from property drawer. We'll just call it layer attribute drawer. Copilot is suggesting a more complicated implementation than we really need for this. All we really need is just to set the int value based on whatever the drop down menu is. So that's all this one line method is doing. And it needs to be a, have a decorator of custom property drawer associated with the attribute that we just made. So let's go back into the editor now. Let's reload those scripts so we can make use of them in a little bit. And let's put the property drawer into the editor folder. Now with that out of the way, we can start working on our actual scripts and we're going to start with the projectile script. So I'm just going to open up the enemy type one so I can just write a new class definition here and move it into its own file. The projectile script is actually going to be pretty straightforward. It basically needs to handle two things. It needs to propel itself forward and it also needs to do things when it instantiates itself and when it gets destroyed and in detect collisions with other objects in the game. So I'm going to give it some properties just so it can handle those things. So we'll define a speed for it. We'll, uh, muzzle prefab if we want to have something go off when it launches. Hit prefab if we want to have something go off when it smacks into something. So we'll deal with the muzzle prefab in the start and we'll deal with the hit prefab on collision enter. And when we've entered a collision, we need to destroy the, the projectile itself. So back in the start method, let's instantiate the muzzle VFX if it exists. Uh, if it was null, then we'll just do nothing. We want to point it in the right direction and we may need to set its parent depending on what we're going to do with it in the future. So that could be null or not. We're basically going to do the same thing with the hit prefab here, except we want to get the contact point out of the collision so that we spawn it right on the contact point. Some of the prefabs that I'm using have particle systems on them and some have them on children. So what I'm going to do is make a common method here to destroy particles 
and we'll either get it off of the component itself or we'll find it in the children and then we'll destroy it based on the duration of the particle system. And the muzzle VFX and the hit VFX are basically going to be the same. So let's just move that method down and I'm going to rename it to destroy particle system. Yeah. And just a little bit of code cleanup here. Now let's make some public methods here just to set speed and parent should we want to do that. Let's remove the using system. That looks good. The only other thing missing here is an update and we're just going to move it forward. And the other thing we're going to do is once it starts moving, we don't want the parent of the transform to be set anymore. And that's because if the enemy's moving along a spline, we don't want our new projectile that was instantiated to become a child of the plane because then it's going to move around the same direction as the plane. We want it to go off in the direction it was fired so it can't have a parent anymore once it's moving. So with that, we can start making some prefabs. So I'll make this first one, I'll call it bullet, and it just needs a reference to our projectile. And we're going to, let me set 10. I'll lock this and drag in a few prefabs that I have. So out of this pack here, I'll grab a projectile sit under the parent, and then we'll put a muzzle flash in there and a hit effect in there. Since we're going to have a few different types of projectiles, let's make a folder for them under our prefabs folder. And I'll drag this bullet into there. The only thing still missing from this is we need a collider on it. So I think I'll just add a simple box collider and I'll make it fairly small, but around the same size as the actual projectiles. Now with that out of the way, we can duplicate this bullet and we can make another one. Let's, let's make a laser. I'll just come in here and find the prefabs that I want to use and drag in some references. So let's replace the hit effect and the muzzle effect. And then let's go into the prefab itself and let's replace the projectile prefab here. And I'll delete that bullet one. We don't need both of them on here. So let's have a look at it quickly in 3D. Looks like it's pointing on the forward axis. Perfect. Next thing to do is we haven't defined any custom layers, so I need one for the player and one for the enemy. So let's set that right now on our player object here, just on the parent. We only really need it on the object that has a collider. And speaking of which, we should set a rigid body and a collider on here. So I'm going to set all the constraints on here because we don't really want this thing bouncing around. We want it totally controlled by the controller and not by anything else. I also don't want it affected by gravity. And then let's add a sphere collider on here. I'm going to make it the same. I'm going to make all these colliders about the same, like 0.35. And my model's just a little bit off center, so I'm going to adjust it here. That looks pretty good. One more thing that we're going to need here is fire point. So the fire point, let's just move it over the, about the same distance I moved the collider. Uh, that looks good. Now our enemy is going to need basically the same settings. So let's open another inspector window here and put it right beside the player. I'll just copy the settings of the rigid body and paste them in there. And then I'll just copy the sphere collider component and paste it as new. Let's set the enemy onto the enemy layer. And we can close that extra inspector window. Unlock this. Now, quickly before we do any more coding, let's just set the collision matrix. I don't want the player shooting himself and I don't want the enemies shooting each other. Okay, that's pretty much it for projectiles. Let's get into weapons and weapon strategies. Let's define an abstract class for weapon because the enemy weapon and the player weapon are almost the same. And we're going to define another abstract class that uh, extends scriptable objects for our strategy. So here we go. Now the strategy, you could technically use many strategies, but uh, in this 
example here, I'm just going to use one. So let's define all the things we need to know about a particular weapon strategy. How much damage does the strategy do? Fire rate, projectile speed, uh, how long does the projectile live that gets fired using this strategy? And what model do we want to use? What's the prefab that we've already made? So we've already got a bullet and a laser. And we're going to make one more in a bit. Let's make some public properties that we might want to access. Damage, fire rate. We'll have an initialize method in case we want to grab any data from the game when we initialize our strategies. Like if our weapon starts using a different strategy, what do we want to know? And then it needs an abstract method fire. It just takes in the fire point and what layer to put the projectile onto. Let's start defining our first strategy. I want a single shot strategy. It'll be the simplest one of all. So we have to override the abstract method fire. And all we're really going to do here is instantiate it. We're going to set its parent. We're going to put it on the layer that we want. And then let's grab the projectile component itself. Let's set the speed of our projectile and then let's set it to destroy itself after its lifetime. And then I just need to make a create asset menu for that and we'll move it into its own class. And it's, that's as simple as it can possibly be. Now let's go back to the weapon class. Weapons will have a strategy always and they need to know about the fire point and they need to know about the layer. Now here's where we can use the layer tag that we built before, but I want to show you another way too. You could just use on validate to set the layer based on the game object of this weapon. So we're going to put the player weapon onto the player game object so it can grab the layer from there. And that way you would never have a mistake. But we'll just do both methods so you can see both. Um, on start, we want to run the strategy initialize just in case there is something for it to do. And then we also have a method so we can change the strategy anytime. Maybe we're going to have pickups later. So we can set the weapon strategy that would just set it and then initialize it. And let's start defining our weapons. So enemy weapon basically needs a timer. Every time the timer expires, fire. And let's move it into its own class. Player weapon is almost the same, except we want to only run it when the fire timer is available, but also when the player is actually pulling the trigger. So let's grab a reference to our input reader, which we've already been using. And we're going to make a new input action on there. That's already defined in our actions. We just need a reference to it. So. I'm just going to create a new property here, jump over to the input reader. Let's define a new input action here for fire. Let's in the start method, let's set it. And then let's set our property here to return the value of the button as long as it's greater than zero. So that means whenever it's being pressed, that will be true. Let's get back into the inspector and make a new folder to put our strategies in. And let's make our single shot strategy. Now I can see I've made a mistake in my code here. because It's giving me the wrong name. That means I messed up the file name and menu name in the create asset menu. So we'll get, we'll come back to that and fix it. I'm just going to drag the bullet into here. We'll call it bullet single shot. Let's make another one for laser single shot. It just needs a reference to the laser. And I think we can basically be the same. Let, let's uh, let's get our player weapon. We'll put it onto the player, and let's set an initial strategy for them and the fire point. And you can see the layer is set to player. And no matter what I do, because of the on validate method, it's going to set it to player, even if I switch it to enemy. Now you could remove that and set it to whatever you want. Now over on our enemy, let's add the enemy weapon script, and let's give them the bullet strategy and. No, we don't have a fire point yet. Let's make one. Let's set it properly. Drag that in there. Now you can see the enemy is on the enemy layer because of the on validate method. I'm just going to also change the fire point of our player. And I just want it to be above the background a little bit and I want them to be pointing away. There we go. So player shooting the laser, enemy shooting the bullet. Looks like we can maybe adjust that fire point a little bit better on the enemy. That's not bad. 
let's fix this little mistake that I made here, file name and menu name, and let's make another strategy. Okay, so next up we've got the triple shot. This is almost the same as a single shot, but what we wanna do is define a spread angle. And then we'll just iterate over our instantiated projectiles. We'll set a, an angle for them to fire at. We'll just change the rotation based on which step of the loop we're in. Copilot already knew what I wanted to do here. Just rotate it based on I minus one. So that'll give us negative 15, then zero, then plus 15 degrees. Let's move it into its own file. I'll change the name of it here to called triple shot. And let's refresh Unity. And let's make a new strategy in here. Um, I'm just gonna put this one on the player. So all I'm gonna do really is drag the laser in here. So we'll do a triple shot laser and we'll set it on our player as its starting weapon and try it out. That's a really simple example, but I hope it kind of conveys the idea of how a strategy pattern can make instantiating different types of weapons super simple in your game. I'm gonna add two more extension methods for Vector3 because they're super useful. If you ever need to add or modify the X, Y, or Z of a Vector3, this is the perfect way to do it. Two methods, I'm just gonna paste them in here for the sake of speed. But one is with, one is add. With will just outright set an X, Y, or Z, or all three if you want. And add will do exactly what it says, add or, or you know, add a negative value. Um, yeah, check out the source code on those, but you're about to see an example of it in use, and hopefully you find that helpful. Let's go back to our projectile, because this last one that I want to do is a targeting strategy. And to do that, I'm going to add an action to our projectile called callback. And every update after we've moved forward, we'll execute the callback method as long as there's something there, as long as it's not null. So let's define our tracking shot. It can be very similar to a single shot. So let's copy this in here. But we want to know how often we're going to update our course. We'll just call that tracking speed. And we need a target, of course. And we're going to make use of that virtual method that we made called initialize. Initialize is going to find our player. We don't want it to run that every time the fire goes off. So that's why we have that initialize there. Now you can see the width here. I'm setting width Z to be the position of our fire point. So it'll be slightly above the background. And then just adjust that tracking speed. Um, so as you can see, that method is going to be what's put into our callback and run on the update method. We'll put this tracking shot into its own class. Um, give it a menu name. So as you can see, the strategy basically finds where the player is and changes rotation of the projectile. That's all it's doing. So let's come back into the project here. Let's define our player tracking shot. And what I want to do here is not, I don't want it to go as fast as the other projectiles. So I'll make it go pretty slow and it can last a little bit longer. Let's set it here on our enemy. Uh, but we still need to make a prefab for our rocket. So I'm going to duplicate the laser and we'll just rename it to rocket. And then we just need to make the appropriate modification. So I'll go find one of the rockets that I resized from earlier. I think seven will do. And let's get rid of the laser. And then we need to set some other things here. A muzzle flash could probably be the same as the laser, but let's set a special explosion in there. I'm just going to adjust the speed here. I'm also going to zero at all the values so that a rocket actually starts in the right place. And All we still need to do is drag that new rocket prefab into our player tracking shot. It's going to adjust that fire rate as well. So let's see. There we go. Well, that looks all right. Let's it might be a little bit much when we start getting more planes. That's where we're going to stop for today, everyone. I know that was a lot covered in one video. If there's any questions, please post in the comments. A big thanks to all the subscribers that have joined uh, the channel recently. 
it's been pretty amazing to watch the growth happen so quickly and uh and it's all thanks to the engagement on the channel hitting the like button and adding comments and whatnot so thank you and we'll see you soon